Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Baff, and welcome to Poco Philosophy, where we introspect and talk about life and philosophy through Pokemon. Now, I'm going to get into today's... Oh, before I got the Pokemon. Man, well, at least the silver scope's working, and I get to see Pokemon for the R. I actually caught a Ghastly and a Haunter, so I think we're good there, but we're going to run away from this, because I actually wanted to get right into the quote for today. So, so what we do for... Pokalosophies, we always start off with a quote from a celebrity or a philosopher or maybe even a, a psychological or economic or even a life concept that we kind of extract and apply to Pokemon and extract how that works in Pokemon and also use it as a metaphor for life. So, for episode 31, I've uh, been doing a lot of thinking and there's one quote by a famed Silicon Valley investor named Naval Ravikant. Love his work. I think he's an incredible philosopher and arguably a guru in some ways, but he has this one quote that really resonated with me, and it's it's not 10,000 hours, it's 10,000 iterations. Some of you may know that 10,000 hour rule that was popularized by an enemy of mine known as Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna try not to speak ill of him because I do, because I feel sometimes criticism of any kind is taking food away from someone's mouth because he does make a living off it. And But with that being said, he's popularized this concept called the 10,000 hour rule, but with, through the telephone effect, the truth of that is actually lost. And Naval, and I always felt that, I actually found that the way 10,000 hour rule was popularized by Malcolm Gladwell was actually a detriment to a lot of people. Uh, I don't want to get into the details of that particular concept, but Naval said it in a way that how we should actually frame 10,000 hours in our head. It's 10,000 iterations. You have to constantly iterate to get to that level of expertise or mastery. Now, it doesn't mean you have to do 10,000 iterations for everything you do. Some tasks, like in my case, um, learning how to make certain Indian foods didn't take 10,000 iterations. It probably took about maybe 500 iterations or, or what have you. Everything you try to master has a number, but the key concept is not the hours and time you spend, but it's the deliberate, mindful iterations you spend to get it yourself to the next level and that gets harder as 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 the more um competent and expertise you gain in that domain and you see this everywhere by the way this is not like a concept you see in sports or music and everything but the idea is that if you want to get better you have to constantly iterate and i use uh hitmonchan over here He's a, he's a fighter, constantly punching. That's the mindset you have to take with this sort of stuff. You have to constantly keep at it until you get that boom knockout punch where you become, I don't want to say become a master, but you become quite the expert that you're, you, you are certainly better than everyone else on the planet, at least at that trade. And, but again, you have to keep at it, keep punching at it. The reason why I brought this up, I made a blunder in the last battle. And let's actually... Actually, for a second, let me just pause this game. And I'm going to show you the blunder I made from the last battle. I think this is important because I, I do want to iterate and get better at Pokemon. And I've been getting great feedback from some of my you know big followers. and and But let's actually introspect and iterate what we can do from this. From faster. So in this case here, I did something correctly. I used X speed. Great. That's good defense. Not too Parasite's slow, okay. but we need to you know speed Parasite up a little bit. What I should have done here... And we'll dig. Not dig. I should have used Spore. Spore has 100% accuracy. And I wouldn't have been in the situation where a Parasect was dying. My Parasect would have actually won. And that's the mistake I made. So how can we potentially iterate on this? So let's go back to the game. So let's go to my Parasect here. And I've actually been like practicing with, with some of the ghost Pokemon because I, we are going to face Gengar in a second, but let's iterate first. And this is something that I, don't, I do in my own spare time, so I'm actually really happy to openly introspect and iterate with you. I think it's really cool to do this with, with you and get some even more feedback in blind spots. So it's Parasect. This is my, uh, my, my Sherman tank for those uh, World War II fans. So what I should do here is move Spore up to the, f to the first move because it's the most important move you can do and you can instantly press, you know, A twice and, and you get that. So what I'm going to do, the next Pokemon I'm going to face, I'm going to switch it up so Spore is first. That's the first iteration. There we go. Perfect. Give me Ghastly. 
Not too worried about it. I have a Hypno going up first. I've been training it up so I, so I can face the Gengar. But I did something similar with, with Hypno as well. I moved Hypnosis up first because it's my most important defensive move that I can use against certain Pokemon. But let's switch up to Parasect. Perfect. Nightshade, not worried. It's all good. We have the healing center there, so whatever damage I get, I'll just recoup from that. So let's move Spore up to Cut. And I think I'm going to move Mega Drain here. Oh dear, I didn't mean to do that. See, this is why you have to iterate in your practice sessions so you get better. Uh, okay, let's move Mega Drain to cut. So now it's in order. So the reason why I did that is that there's actually an interesting psychological concept that I mentioned in one of my comments in the last video where you only remember the first and last items of a list. And Spore was in the middle, so I didn't really remember it. It was there. And it's also a short word, so, it's, so I don't see it as, as well. So now it's my first move. Once It's actually the most important defense move I have. The second a most important defensive move is, is Dig, which, let me show you something with Dig, and I want people's feedback here, because I thought it was a normal type move, or it's, but it's really effective against Ghost Pokemon. Like, super effective. I didn't expect that to happen, so that was through the iterations, like I've been practicing, what can I use against Gengar? See, super effective. That doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe it's a glitch in the game or something, I don't know. So let's go back to... Stats. Okay. So, Spore is first. Most important defensive move. 100% accuracy. It instantly puts him to sleep. Uh, pending the other type of Pokemon, obviously. Dig, my strongest move. It's also a great defense offensive move, right? Because you avoid one uh, your, your way, but you can hit. Again, not good against flying Pokemon, but still pretty good. Mega Drain. More important than Cut, because I do get some, some of the, the health back. And it's actually quite effective in some ways. So it's actually an order of defense first and then effectiveness later. Cut, it's a very simple move, not too worried about it. But at least with Mega Drain, unlike Spore, I'll see the term. So it won't be a blind spot anymore. So this is an example of an iteration. And I think one thing that we can do is go through these moves sequentially with Parasect. I think Parasect needs a bit of automation with my head. So Parasect's strategy now will always be Spore, then instantly dig after at the Mega Train and, re and then repeat between Dig and Mega Drain as much as you can. I try to treat Parasect as a tank, because uh, it is a tank, the way it looks and everything and the, how it functions with high defense. It's a bit slow, it's not, it's not necessarily like uh, a fast Pokemon, but good fundamentals, right? So at least with Spore, it's almost like an important big hit to kind of distract the enemy. And then basically go with Dig and Mega Drain constantly taking away whatever you can from that. So that's one iteration there. With Hypno, it's going to go first against my Gengar, uh, because I'm going to be first seeing Gengar very soon. Uh, I haven't had a problem with the mood, move ordering just yet, but maybe we can do that uh, right now as well. So maybe we can move... Let's see, Hypnosis is the most important move I can do. I'm going to move Flash to the bottom. And then I'm going to put Confusion as second, because it is quite a powerful move. And then Headbutt's kind of a nice little offensive fallback. Flash is great. I actually noticed Flash to be quite handy to use it against. And then it does affect the accuracy. And I do notice that most times I do use it, uh, the other Pokemon will not be able to attack me as well. So it's definitely worth it. So let's do that for the next wild Pokemon here. I also did catch a Cubone, by the way, which is great. Perfect. Another Ghastly. No worries. So let's do first the move ordering. So let's move Confusion to Headbutt, and then we'll move Flash to the bottom. Great. Oh, I, I'm not used to the controls with, with Select. Oh, there it goes. Let's try again. Flash. Good. So I use Flash. Oh, failed. Didn't work. Oh, that's not good. 
Anyways, I don't need to do these battles, so it's fine. I'm just gonna run away. Let's heal up. Great. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do before I face my Gengar, I'm just actually gonna go through... Uh, no, actually... If you have any ideas for Kadabra... So, I want to iterate, or I want to reiterate something here with Kadabra. Kadabra is not my main psychic Pokemon. Through the help of one of my followers, Jervis Tremaine, I've opted for a Hypno. But Kadabra is my experiment. I, I, I just want to experiment with what I can do with the Kadabra. And how to make it a bit of a, uh, a clutch slash defensive plot twist Pokemon that I can use in interesting ways that maybe people won't expect. So these are the current moves. I don't know what else I can do with it. Uh, please let me know from the comments. Uh, it would be very really helpful to strategize what I can do with the Kadabra. Again, I'm trying to iterate an experiment here. And maybe the next time I play, let's say, Pokemon Blue or Yellow, I might actually make Kadabra my main psychic Pokemon. I don't know. Haven't decided so long. That That's a few maybe years away from, from doing that. But anyways, let me know what you think. I do plan on doing a video where I'll go through each of my Pokemon to the PC and my roster to to show you what I have, my current stats and and moves. And if you have any feedback, you know, please let me know. But we'll do that uh, uh, next time around. And Pikachu against Ghost Pokemon is great, but I think I really just want I want that Gengar. I want to kind of call that off. So my lineup will be Hypno and Parasect, and Pikachu just for 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 exposure to later. All right, let's go face that Gengar. We have unfinished business. Let's go ahead. Oh, you know what? Should I use Repel? No, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So, on that note, I think iterations have really helped me because it's like, I... Oh, it's the other side. My bad. Um, I learned a lot through constantly iterating a poke philosophy in my life, and I think that's one thing where I stand out from most people in my life is that I'm, I don't settle. I'm always iterating. And one of my big fan followers, going back to Juris Jermaine, he's probably iterated so much over the years because he's like definitely the most expert Pokemon player I've ever met. Uh, even though I've never met him personally, he's comments on my videos. Uh, if you see him, you know, give him a like. He's a great knowledgeable person, like more than I expected ever. And again, I didn't have expectations from his knowledge, but he's the kind of person that like constantly iterated. You can tell by the way he explains certain things, and he he knows all the, all the nicks, uh, nooks and crannies of this game. And that's something that I hope to achieve over the next few years with with, with Poke Philosophy. Another area of my life that I'm constantly iterating on is cooking. Cooking, like you have to constantly iterate on certain dishes because you just want to get really good at it. But again, it just comes from mindful practice, right? Never get too comfortable. Comfort is a... Um, it's, it's a drug of seduction and safety. It doesn't really do much for people, so... Be gone, intruders. Okay, here we go. Let's get this Gengar. Oh, wait. It's a Gengar, right? Oh no, it's a Marowak! I thought it was a Gengar! That's interesting. Uh, Hypnosis. Didn't affect. Oh dear. Okay. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Okay, let's switch it to the Parasect. We'll get Sporum. Sp Sporum will definitely work. Not worried about that. Defense spell spore. Perfect. We're just gonna cut. It won't be perfect. And I'm just Oh, it bro woke up. What? Sleep again. Sleep, sleep. Perfect. Okay, now uh we'll use Great Ball. Wait, what? Yo! I thought you... Oh, oh, I don't... I... I I'm vaguely recall this. You know what? Let's end this.
Great strategy. See how he iterated? We used Spore as the first defensive line. It ended up working out quite well. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, oh, crap. Uh, I don't remember this. Okay, let's save the game. And we'll do one battle. Let's see how long this goes for. Let's do this. I'm here to beat you. Let's go, Zubat. Oh, Zubat. <laughs> Alright, Hypno, let's do this. I didn't affect- Oh, no, no, not again! Excellent. Easy peasy. Uh, we'll change Pokemon, yes. I need some more- I need to get Pikachu more experience. It's been a while since I used Pikachu. Actually, while we're at it, if you see any- if you have any ideas on move ordering here, please let me know. I haven't put much thought into it, so, um... I was thinking of putting Thunder Wave first, actually. Uh, oh, there we go. Um... Cause I think that would have been a good, uh, again, trying to think defensively first, cause I'm, I'm a defense player in person. Let's do... Kadabra. Oh, yeah, I forgot how it looks like. <laughs> go that. Let's use Disable. Excellent, that's a good move to disable. That won't do anything. Take down. Nope, oh, attack miss. Yeah, this my camera sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kadabra. I know you're an experiment, but like I just you're just not very good. No, oh, that's not good. You know what? We're switching. Pikachu. Ooh, big. We'll send this. Excellent. Perfect. Great. Okay. I think that's enough for for this episode. Uh, we'll, we'll actually save right here. I'm not going to continue any further. Oh, the wild Pokemon. Alright, I'm just going to save this game here. We'll continue on. We'll battle the next uh, bunch of uh, Team Rocket and we'll call it a day. I hope everyone has a great... Uh, long weekend to those in Canada, and I hope those who are experiencing allergies is feeling a lot better. My allergies are, are a lot better than uh, they were last week. I think uh, just trying to stay healthy and happy, I think, is like my biggest priority right now. So, again, my heart goes out to people who are facing the, probably the toughest allergy season known to date, and it's only going to get worse from here since uh, climate change has affected our, our pollen cycles. Uh, I don't know why that's an important piece of information, but it is. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. Uh, I do want to grow this into something pretty interesting and big. And uh, talk to you soon. Take care.